Hello students, I'm Mayor Pam Hemminger, and I want to share a book with you today about Elizabeth Cotton. I love reading books about people from our community who followed their passion no matter what the obstacles. So here we go. This book is called Libba, The Magnificent Musical Life of Elizabeth Cotton, and it's written by Laura Veers. Libba Cotton heard music everywhere. She heard it in the river when she brought in water for her mother. She heard it in the axe when she chopped wood for kindling. She heard it in the freight trains moving down the tracks near her house. She even heard it when she wasn't allowed to. When her brother Claude was at work, Libba snuck into his room and borrowed his guitar. Dang, she whispered, Claude was right-handed, Libba was not. She turned the guitar upside down and played it backwards. It was kind of like brushing your teeth with your left foot or trying a shoe with one hand. Nobody else played that way, but it was the way that felt right to Libba. Like a train plays rhythms on the tracks, Libba made the notes go up and down. Like water bubbles in a brook, Libba sang a little song. Like a girl doing what she was born to do, Libba played the guitar upside down and backwards. One time she broke a string. Another time she scratched the wood. Each time she put the guitar back. Dang, Claude said, she's done it again. But then Libba played him a song upside down and backwards. She played in a funny way, but she sure was good. Soon Claude moved out to get a job, taking his guitar with him. But Libba never stopped in her tracks. She kept rolling. Now, what can a little girl like you do? I can sweep the floors, I can pick the vegetables, I can set the table. She earned 75 cents a month. Pretty soon she had saved up $3.75, just enough for a Stella guitar. All day and night she played that guitar, long after everyone had gone to sleep. Her mother would shout, Babe, I gotta go to work in the morning. How about a lullaby? So Libba put her mother to sleep, playing upside down and backwards. Libba played and played, and before you could say dang, she'd written her first song. She wasn't even 13 yet. Freight train, freight train, run so fast. Freight train, freight train, run so fast. Please don't tell what train I'm on. They won't know what route I've gone. But even trains get derailed. Time swept Libba up and she stopped playing the guitar. She was a tall and stately grandmother working in a department store. One day she found a little girl lost in the store. She returned the girl to her mother, Ruth Crawford Seeger, a composer in a famous musical family. Ruth could tell that Libba was kind and gentle and Libba felt the same way about Ruth. As the Seegers' new housekeeper, Libba moved like a galleon, taking care of the family. She made eight-inch chocolate cakes with six layers each. She loved the spirited children, but most of all, she loved how the home was filled with music. You could hear banjos in the bedrooms, pianos in the parlor, and bass drums in the basement. The children awoke in the morning to bluesmen and drifters sleeping by a smolding fire. The musicians had funny names like Lead Belly, Woody Guthrie, and Muddy Waters. And Libba worked. She listened. One day, the kids on the porch and the bluesmen in the living room and the drummers down below heard a sound. It was like a thousand song bar songbirds singing, or a gentle spring rain, or a train rambling down the track. It was Libba singing and picking that guitar like she'd never set it down. Dang, cried the kids. She can play, cried the bluesman. Soon the whole house was turned upside down and backwards. The children were clearing the dishes and washing up. The bluesmen were singing Libba's songs. Ruth was playing along. Everyone wanted to hear Libba's music. Sing Freight Train again, they shouted. The Seegers believed in Libba and helped spread the word about her music. But it was Libba's perseverance, her love of music, and her belief in herself that gave the world her voice. Libba played grand cathedrals in London and velvet theaters in Rome. 
thousands of people sang along when she played Freight Train. And now millions of people know her music. Libba turned her guitar upside down and backwards so that she could play it in her own way. She turned the music world upside down and backwards too. Libba Cotton never stopped in her tracks. She kept rolling. Freight train, freight train, run so fast. Freight train, freight train, run so fast. Please don't tell what train I'm on. They know, won't know what route I've gone. So that's one of the stories of Elizabeth Cotton who grew up here in Chapel Hill. So we want you to enjoy the book and I hope you'll read many more books about people in our community who always follow their passion. Thank you.